The history of Diving Museum in Isle Murat, it tells the international story of mankind's attempts to explore, understand, and venture under the sea. You can go to this museum and you can just marvel at the bravery of inventors over the ages. You can also understand how diving has contributed to marine science, to treasure hunting, and even underwater photography. Thomas, thank you for being with me on the show today. Thanks for having me here. All right, let's just get right into the museum, Thomas. Tell me who started this museum. Well, the museum was, was founded uh, going on eight years ago now by, by two doctors from Ohio, mm -hmm. Dr. Joe and Dr. Sally Bauer. He was uh, a surgeon who pioneered keyhole surgery in the United States, and, and uh, she was an ER doctor. And in a, a high-stress prof profession like that, they were scuba divers to, mm -hmm. to blow off steam in their, in their time off. And, the, and back in the, the uh, 60s and 70s, they, they started scuba diving. And, and what you have in the museum is 60 years worth of, of collecting diving equipment. Um, in, in 1970, they bought their first diving helmet at a junk shop down here in the Keys, mm -hmm. uh, paid a whole $500 for it. It's probably worth you know, 50 times that today. But, uh, and they, as she says, they were bitten by the collecting bug. Mm -hmm. And they amassed what is probably the largest collection of diving equipment under a single roof in the, in the world wow. at this point. Yeah, it's, it's an impressive collection. Mm -hmm. And this is right here in the Keys, in it, Isle Murata. Yep, yeah, mile marker 83. And, mm -hmm. the, and don't be fooled by the building as you go by. You can see the awning over the gift shop, but that entire expansive building, over 3,000 square feet of, of exhibit space in there. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's huge. Most people come in and they say, wow, we didn't realize there was all this in here. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize how large it was. Now, how would you say this museum relates to specifically to the Keys? Well, you know, the history of the Florida Keys is very much, it runs concurrently with the history of diving. You know, the, the, uh, the original inhabitants, the Calusa and Tequesta Indians, were divers. They salvaged from, from wrecked ships around here. And not just diving, but treasure diving. You know, the, they, were, they were pulling the cargoes that, that sank on Spanish galleons. And that has been that something that's continued over the years. Uh, we have a, a large section. Our treasure room is dedicated to Art McKee, who uh, 45 years before Mel Fisher found the Atosha, Art was out there discovering the 1733 fleet along the, the, uh, the reef of the Florida Keys. Um, 14 ships wrecked along 80 miles of our, of our coastline. And Art was out there looking for scrap metal for the, for the war effort during World War II and, and came up not only with cannons that he was originally going to melt down, but started finding treasure. And, you know, it's funny because his daughter, Karen McKee, uh, who's, you know, donated a lot of artifacts relating to him to our museum, refers to Mel Fisher as Uncle Mel. Um, she remembers him being around, and, and this is one of the, the, the elder statesmen of treasure diving that helped train Mel and get him, get him bitten by the bug. Wow. Okay, now what would you say personally is your favorite display at the museum? Well, I, you know, I like a lot of the things that, that, that relate to specifically to the Florida Keys and, and some of the things that, that, that Art came up with. We've got 400-year-old timbers from the, from the uh, El Capitan Ruby, uh, the, the, uh, the flagship of the 1733 fleet, and you have those. And, you know, we don't necessarily encourage it, but at a lot of museums, you can't really get close to things and touch things, and, but... but uh, you know, no one's going to kick you out if you put your finger on there and say, wow, that's a 400-year-old timber from, from a Spanish galleon. I love stuff like that. We've got a great collection of, of diving armor. The kids love those things. Iron Mike is one of our, uh, our, our great diving armor pieces, mm -hmm. and you can be his friend on Facebook. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of neat stuff there. It sounds like there are some wonderful things. And our, our viewers can check out the website and the number on the bottom of the screen. Now, we're running out of time, but what would you say makes this museum different from some of the other museums? Well, here? I think that, that, that part of what makes it unique is the, 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 a lot of the, the opportunity to be hands-on with artifacts. We have several different opportunities for, for you know, kids of all ages to try on some of these dive helmets and really get a sense, a tactile sense, of, of what this equipment was about. And, you know, that, that one of the things that makes it unique, well, you may look at it and say, well, I'm not a diver, I'm not that interested. This museum, it's a science museum, it's a history museum, it's, a, it's even an art museum when you look at the artistry behind the designs of, of this equipment. And it's, you know, it's really got something for everybody. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a diver to enjoy it. You don't have to be a diver. In fact, we get lots of divers in the museum, that, but we also get lots of people that, that don't have any relation to diving that said, I never knew how much diving had contributed to, you know, modern day culture and modern day science. Mm -hmm. so. Wonderful. It sounds 
sounds great, and I'll definitely be there soon to check it out. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for being on the show. And that's going to do it for me today, everyone. I thank you for tuning in this morning. I hope you can join me again tomorrow at 7 a.m. and then at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day.